welcome back to the Scumbag. It is episode 17, and it is the 1st of February 2017. I'm here with Felix once more, who's fresh back from protesting at JFK Airport. The people were delaying flights. Yes, I, um, I, you know, just wanted to go out, show my support, show my support for the brave customs officers, TSA, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and JFK especially. It was a great sight. There were thousands of us there supporting the troops. God bless America, man. I, but, but more importantly, we have a guest. We have Bill Corbett from uh, Mart- Masterpiece Theatre. Wonderful actor. <laughs> uh, he's done so much work for PBS. I'm, oh, fuck. Oh. Oh, that is not the per. Okay. Uh, Bill, Bill has Mystery Science Theatre... 3,000 is what Bill did. Great. No, but in all seriousness, Bill, thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. I'm sitting by my fireside in a, in a big wingback chair in a, in a satin robe, trying to be a masterpiece theater guy. Well, I, I actually finished a glass of red wine just for the show because that's how just much of a piece of shit I am. It's like 5.31 mm-hmm. and I must hit the wine that quickly. But today we're talking about... In, well, it to go with the masterpiece theater angle, but not really. We're talking about YouTube, but also streaming and the effect of the internet upon movies, because I feel like YouTube has just kind of shat all over movies, much like the internet has destroyed everything. YouTube (laughs) is even worse for movies than anything. It's like every single show is like a a poster of the movie and a guy like holding his head Um, and like all crying. YouTube, YouTube, uh, they have a lot of good kerning. I'm a big fan of kerning. Uh, usually big <laughs> white block letters, and the titles of the videos are always like, uh, you know, um, apology for wearing blackface. <laughs> <laughs> I go to YouTube mostly to learn how to disarm a guy with a gun from 20 feet with my big katana. Those are the best. <laughs> what, like, uh, cut- like Kurt Eichenwald's son can? Well, he can actually use... He can use uh, chi <laughs> to disarm them. Oh, sorry. Yeah, That's he insult. can just do a, a, a Bruce Lee heart punch from 20 feet. <laughs> but it's... It, it, the internet is actually, I would say, from Rift, Rift Tracks and MST3K. Fuck, I need to learn to say that. Probably been practicing all week. That's what I practice, everyone. And... I feel like the, there are things like uh, Red Letter Media, for example, that have totally ripped off your your act, Bill. I'm not expecting you to like say they have, because I actually really enjoy Red Letter Media. But there is certainly a precedent set for just sitting there and watching the film and going, oh, fuck. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not an amazingly complex idea, so I don't think any of us have real... I don't know, get real touchy about other people doing it because it wasn't it wasn't incredibly original to us. I think we were just the idiots who 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 worked at it um, and and scammed everybody into a career with it. <laughs> You're talking to a guy who runs a very successful five figure podcast and someone who works in public relations. Yeah, you didn't okay, scam so anyone. Know, I'm actually you know what a, I'm talking about. I'm actually a CEO at me. <laughs> That's what I am. I've seen your resume online. Yeah. Good job, man. <laughs> um, Do you are you are you fluent in sarcasm? Though? I'm fluent in sarcasm. Aww. I graduated from the school of hard knocks, and uh, <laughs> I learned uh, I learned everything that I need to learn about Islam during the movie Syriana. Bet you thought I was going to say nine eleven. No, it's actually the movie Syriana. <laughs> I'm a CEO at me who loves Steven Soderbergh. Just goes to show you should not judge a book by its Kirkus review. <laughs> to quote you Gary Vaynerchuk. You, uh, you could do worse than Syriana. It's a good movie. Yeah, it is. I wouldn't see it because I'm scared of foreigners. Oh, yeah, well. I mean, come on. But it's it's interesting watching how... The, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Plinkett, so the guy who runs Red Lab Media... I would say he's he's touched upon something a more negative side that I think 
you guys didn't, which actually made because what you did because uh, what was it? Manus Hands of Fate, I think it was. Yeah, I was that was earlier. the uh, that was the borderline snuff movie that we unearthed. Yeah. <laughs> But what was nice about that was you were mean, but there was a kind of like, there was like a kindly meanness to it. It was almost like just joshing them. And it, and we were talking about, just before the show, Shake Hands with Danger, the Caterpillar safety video, where you were just, you were just kind of, kind of making fun of it. It seems the internet's gained this kind of mean edge with movies. Well, you know, I... We try to be, we have tried to be funny first. Sometimes it's hard not to, uh, to lurch into being bitter old men, but it's, it's just not fun to listen to for very long. And I think that's what people who, uh, imitate our, our little, our little, um, scam forget sometimes. It's like to make good jokes and just not sound like a dickhole as you're doing it. I think you know. I think it arose naturally from the the sunny Midwesterners here who were doing it, and I was just a token New Yorker who came in with bile and subway rats <laughs> hanging off me. But <laughs> but but still, I mean, it, it it was never the goal to just like nuke a movie, especially when it was. I mean, so many of them are just fish in a barrel, and and we do we do some movies that we actually think are pretty good now, and just do it more as a roast. Um, you know, it's always we always risk corniness by by that, and I think we've gone over the line and being a little too um, namby pamby at times. But we've also gone the other direction and been, you know, just fucking old crones. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've seen Red Letter Media. They have an empire, don't they? I mean, they do. They they stole the Chapo business model, by the way, of, <gasps> of selling content. Did they really? I don't know how I feel about people being paid for the things they do. Ryan Broderick, for, who I believe is the CEO of BuzzFeed for Africa, I didn't check, um, is is really angry at Drill for making money, making probably the funniest things on Twitter. How, Maybe how that's could a you bit be crazy. angry at Drill? He's given us how so much. You, yeah, he's, like, but, he's written but, comedy for free for like fucking years cigar. and years and years. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Broderick and his to sideline a bit. Broderick said this thing that sort of reminded me of the last episode, where he's like, "Oh, I just thought, you know, it 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 makes the internet seem unpure." And it's like you never knew the real pure internet. Like you work for BuzzFeed, you're one of the people that made the internet less pure. Oh my god! Like this is a this is a new and. That- like in this new environment, like at least people like him should be, at least people like Drill should be able to make money from the shit that they do. And on top of that as well, and, I, and here's the thing with being mean as a form of comedy, you need to have your facts straight. So if you go and look, and this is someone who is paid, who is judging Drill for getting paid, wrote things such as, this girl's boyfriend did the funniest thing after accidentally coming home drunk, the 50 worst things on the internet in 2016, people on 4chan appear to be having a complete meltdown over the election right now, and I joined ISIS. No, nope, sorry. No, I mean meet the refugee <laughs> who says he will be. I would, have, I would have a modicum, a modicum of respect for that at least. Yeah, <laughs> no, at, it's least just it's, like, at least it's a fucking ideology, man. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Getting back a little bit to uh, sort of the aim and the uh, meanness of comedy. Uh, I've yeah. watched. Uh, I've watched Mystery Science Theater. You know now for like you know way over half my life and i'm also a huge yeah. fan of riff tracks but i've never felt that you guys were really mean in any way i never felt like you were there was any like yeah. personal spite towards even the directors or writers of the movie and i think that's probably one of the reasons why it has so much staying power people uh there's sort of a corollary with the old internet, the old internet being a much meaner place than it is now uh, mm-hmm. for the most part. And I, people often sort of discard parts of the old internet because they think it's too mean. The The funniest things that happen on there now, like if people did them now, you know, there are people have gotten older. There are different types of people on the internet. There are different moral standards to it. It's not the wild west anymore. So people try to distance mm-hmm. themselves from that. Uh, whereas with MST3K and Rift Tracks, I've never thought there was any 
like real underlying hate or meanness. And I, that's probably why it's such like for so many people, it's such a big part of their development that they will, will never, uh, will never give up. I'll pro I'm going to watch, uh, I I'm going to watch mystery science theater till the day that I die. <laughs> I really am. And, 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 and it, oh. <laughs> and it felt like a bunch of guys shooting the shit. Yes. Yeah. While watching it. Like he was just going like making fun of it versus, well, the opposite. Well, yeah, that's it. Where it's just like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be mean. Eh. Well, that, that's why people like podcasts. That's why podcasts have more staying power than like, you know, for, for a while, the big thing on the internet was like, I'm, I'm the rant guy. I'm going <laughs> right, yeah. right, to, right. I'm going to rant about <laughs> seeing a woman with her children in Walmart, stupid bitch having kids. <laughs> and when you're like 13, you're like, this is awesome. Please like, don't insult my fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, man. <laughs> But when you get older, you're like, oh, that guy's that guy's bitter and fucked up. <laughs> but, uh, right. Exactly right. But yeah. a podcast, why a podcast is great. And, you know, there's a lot of bleed over from people who came from listening to Loveline or Howard Stern into listening podcasts <laughs> or Mr. Sense yeah. into listening podcasts. And it's because there's the same type of thing where it's like you feel like you're listening. I mean, at its ideal, that's what it is. You're listening to a really good conversation with incredibly funny people. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I, there aren't as, as podcasts have developed, that art has gotten better and looser, I think. And people don't, I don't know, their adrenaline doesn't get up to do the, the equivalent of a, of a, you know, 75 minute rant. Um, and the rhythms are a little more natural. Um, so I don't know. I, I like podcasts more than I did say like five years ago. It seems, and you know, I've, I've found, I found some natural matches for what I like too, but um, yeah, I, I tend not to like people who think that, you know, I'm going to lay out the truth now, man, about whatever, just like you described Felix, the, the rant is such a form and it is a, like, it's a rant, the rant even on like, um, you know, sites like Daily Coast or something like that was a was a yeah. real was a real um, staple of the of that site. It's like I'm gonna just rant for a while about Bernie supporters. I know I know that's not really the topic for this, but but but, but it's not completely off topic because so one of my favorites is the Mister Blinkett Red Letter Media thing, except mm -hmm. it never felt what like. And I've I've watched all of the hour and a half prequel things. And yes, some of it was fueled by hate, but what really made it magical was you could tell this guy fucking loves Star Wars, knew it to like its depths and its core, mm -hmm. and that was where the comedy was. And yeah, he slipped in some jokes I don't exactly ag agree with, but he, he generally kept an act going and did it very well. <laughs> And then, he didn't like the running bit that he uh, that he he was murdering women yeah, in his basement. That was the thing that like really <laughs> just you 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 let them go as a warning. Um, no, so I was I was jealous. <laughs> I thought we you know for years we missed that that whole uh, opportunity to make us into serial killers. Uh, but it's but it was never more obvious how it was all about the fact he loves Star Wars when the Force Awakens came out. And he did his hour long mm. Force Awakens thing. And it was funny for like 10 minutes. And then it just became like, I'm annoyed that Disney made money. It's like, Jesus, <laughs> fuck, fuck, fucking, fucking hell. Well, it's like, wow, congratulations, mate. Are you going to be mad? There's electricity on your house. Like when you make, uh, when you make stuff like that, there's no way to, as, as stand up comics say, there's no way to read the room. Yeah. And, and, you know, like well, I, I watched one of them today on a link you sent to Mister. Uh, what's his Mr. name? Mister Blinkett. It's his character. Mister. Yeah, and I really thought it was pretty funny in, in in a lot of parts. It's just maybe it's my attention span. Maybe you know I have holes in my brain from too many years of <laughs> acting like a moron. But uh, I just couldn't stay with it for the full length. It just seemed like I don't I don't know that this requires a, like an exegesis on this level. Like it's Finnegan's way. Oh God! If you think that's but the thing is, that was the good one I sent you. So he did one on the Force... <laughs> the Force... Because there's a lot to pick apart with the prequels, and this is not a podcast to do so on. But he does it very well, and he does it in a way that, that it shows how much he oh, loves well, it. Then, good day, sir. Good, good day. day. <laughs> I hang up on you. Now, but I, it's... I came here to talk, talk Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but his... 
But those three, like, if you're willing to stick with an hour and a half, because I really do have holes in my brain, I watched all of these hour and a half long Star Wars roasts, but it was about more like the structural failings, almost like a kind of Lost in La Mancha style, but obviously not with with the actual documentary film budget, where it was like a deconstruction of what happened with those prequels and like making fun of them at the same time. But then when he did his Force Awakens one, it was like him desperately trying to come up with things to be mad at. He was like, it's kind of like a new hope. Uh, and um, well, Disney he made had, money. He had pretty good, he had pretty good uh, analytical ability there about story and narrative buried underneath the, whatever he was supposed to be, the, Townie, the <laughs> Southie from Boston? Yeah. Is that what he's supposed to be? Just a scary old man online. I think <laughs> Who keeps women in his basement. I think it was meant to be like a joke about internet people, but I, I liked it because I'm very easily amused. Yeah. But it's just, it's really weird how you, he does come across one thing which leads neatly on, which is he does talk about something that I truly fucking despise. The worst part of the internet for me, apart from obviously all the racists and Stormfront and things like that. See, you, those are my favorite things. Oh, I'm but, sorry. Uh, this could be all. Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. But is reaction videos, which are entirely people just either going, huh, or yelling, like, like, yeah. like ejaculating. I don't know why they exist. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. I mean, Felix does one of those every single time Kirk Eichenwall posts, and I, it's actually I, I don't me. like them. It's actually me cheering. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, Kirk. <laughs> Keep telling the truth. <laughs> but, but it's, I mean, the it's, very, video, it's very weird as well. And the reaction no, videos, uh, the reactions from videos speak to like a very. Uh, you know, to crib off Adam Curtis a little bit, the, the making the internet into the zone. We're in this odd space where, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, the instead of creating things, most of the most of the economy of the internet is like something happens and you monetize about seven hundred different reactions to the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're they're astounding because it's so. So many steps removed from anything really creative, uh, but there, you know, there's a huckster quality to it that I almost like darkly admire. Like a lot of stuff in the zone. Like pretty much all of the internet now is an, on some level making money from doing something worthless. Yeah. In my darker moments, I fear that we are doing that. Oh God, that's exactly what I do <laughs> with my daily job. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, most of what I like, I unfortunately lost my greatest uh, zone gig, which was genius. Literally, not even oh, writing an article, oh. just going on to articles to talk shit about them. And it was, I actually lost it the day, the moment that Trump was inaugurated. Oh, no. I mean, I, it's that they didn't <laughs> fire me, they just stopped doing the program. Oh, I see. I missed That's doing that. Oh, I was thought also, Trump. I thought Trump shut it down. I, d- yeah, I, d- did. I don't. I just don't think it's fair. I don't think they're being fair to Kurt Eichenwald. Oh, gotta <laughs> he loves Kurt Eichenwald, <laughs> despite all the reporting Kurt has done about him. But I was actually the first victim of the Trump be- administration for this. But yeah. uh, it was yeah. it was a very odd thing, like the doing the genius annotations. I think it was a great idea. Because a lot of articles don't necessitate necessitate new articles, and it sort of cleaned up the clutter of the internet in a way. And it was like a novel way to do things. It was very pop up video, but at the same time, I agree. At the same time, cool. though, it was like this is an. I never predicted things going in this way, where I uh, I am paid yeah. to uh, like swim in the swim in the slipstream of of really bad articles. Yeah. <laughs> and I did this. I, Welcome to my world, my Felix. World too. I did the same thing. I wonder, I wonder how um, much Nick Bilton has paid because I was paid at least a, 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 like a few hundred bucks thanks to Nick Bilton. Just just purely like shitting on his articles every week, like like refreshing his page. Genius for me was like it was like in Goodfellas when they talk about robbing uh, the airport whenever they're low on money. <laughs> Dude, there's seriously weeks yeah. where we would annotate four articles and make like just a fucking disgusting amount of money for like how easy it actually was. 
I'm going to miss it so much. Yeah. Well, I, and I have to say, though, like that the genius gig, the ones I saw you guys do, I mean, it, the proof was in the quality of it. Yeah. Because there's a really, there are all kinds of shitty versions of that imaginable and I'm sure out there with the same technology or a similar technology where it's just people going, LLO, yeah, right. You know, like that, that is to me like the, 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 um, the kind of dumb version of people trying to do what we do. And sometimes we do the dumb version of what we do too. I, I'm not going to lie to you, but there, the, you know, when we look at stuff that people have done on the model of MST3K or riff tracks, uh, when, when I get, when I get thrown out of it, I just feel like, man, that was like no effort or I don't know. You just, you're just not a natural at this. And I thought you guys delivered a great um, mix of, Real good comedy, which is why I like Chapo too. I mean, you guys are funny as hell, and but also substantial comedy and pointed and substantial commentary and pointed stuff. And you know, it deflated the self importance of a lot of those articles that are very puffed up um, and make a lot of assumptions that just need you know a little dart thrown in them. <laughs> well, like I, I, I think that. Um like one of the you know, first of all, I can definitely agree that sometimes you do it like I, I end up doing parodies of what I do. I am not proud of everything that I've put out there, <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm I'm moving soon uh, to furnish an apartment. They can all be home runs, but uh, sweet. Uh, it's a new day. It's a new day. Uh, but I think like like for all three of us for all three of our comedic sensibilities. One of the funniest things, one of the, like the big recurring themes I see in like all the jokes that everyone on this podcast right now enjoys the most are people with an inflated sense of self importance. It is one of the funniest yeah, yeah. comedic anchors. You can sort of build something around. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm well said. And I mean, there's so someone who I've been very, very fortunate to me is this bloke called Pablo Hidalgo, who also has a fucking brilliant name. He's one of the, and I, I, I don't know the exact term for it, but basically he's one of the groups of people who organizes the, the Star Wars universe, kind of the showrunner. And talking to him about this kind of thing without having Pablo on, it's fantastic. I love speaking for people so they can't argue with me. But it's fascinating talking to someone who was just like probably read like 50 people being like, um, Kylo Ren's gay, like just <laughs> randomly yelling at him like every day. <laughs> and I was just going to throw in a parenthetical here. It was like, just speaking of YouTube last year, I was looking for this classical piece. I don't really know classical music, but there was one piece that I was listening to at the public radio in the car and really moved me. And I wanted to find it. I found it on the internet and uh, it was on YouTube, beautiful, beautifully done quartet, and underneath you know, the YouTube comments for the same shit, gay. Just <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is that was this is a shit. That this was a shit me. version of the fourth man. <laughs> it's like it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I now want. I now want to go and troll. Eat, eat dicks, man. <laughs> I want to look like, Tchaikovsky more like gay Jeffkovsky. Like, I can't show you. I do the Jackoff gesture. But it's, let's do it. But it's let's do it. But yeah, we're on this. But it's the the thing about that was talking to him about that as well about things like Mister Plinkett and all that. It's really weird how the internet with when it comes to film stuff has moved into this thing where it's ultimately just it's either one guy and it is heavily guys standing in front of a camera going, I saw the film, but I'm not gonna say spoilers. So you know, here's what happens in the movie without without any plot, because apparently te- <laughs> saying anything spoilery is like That is the s- secular religion yeah, of YouTube. Like that shit will you will get killed for that. That is like that's oh, like yeah. haram of the internet. You, <laughs> you fucking spoil you. S- yeah, and the and the statute of limitations is like forty to fifty years <laughs> too. You, yeah, don't like you can't you can't tell the end of to to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> yeah, or the crying game, and it's it, right. it, it's. But it's really weird as well. Like all of them have pretty much the same format. It's either two or three guys standing around yelling, or 
one guy yelling at a microphone with like still motion pictures. And so, and these people are making way more money and like good, like I used to really enjoy the like good, honest film critic pieces. I mean, I believe like, the, like I still, even though I fundamentally disagree, I still quite enjoyed the Eber Empire Strikes Back review. And as, as, mm. as many things have been ruined, I feel like movies have just become like, I don't know, they're not as fun to know about on the internet. I had the ma- a major thing in Rogue One ruined for me because of Twitter, which, I mean, I've come to hate that movie because of the fucking internet. I actually walked out really liking it and I read some stuff and I was like, now I fucking hate it. Like, it, it absorbed the experience of joy I had. So, like, I, I don't know. I feel like... The, the the internet has moved into this weird when it looks a film anything to do with films their critique is entirely based on like how well does it fit into a predisposed uh if it's part of a franchise does it fit into the franchise correctly is it is it too or not enough racist like 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 doc, like doc, like doctor well, strange I, I, I think, like fucking hell i think one of the things i was I was trying to make this argument, and I, I did a show, um, uh, a podcast last year, where the topic was Star Wars, and basically, this friend of mine got me on as like the the anti Star Wars guy. And I don't. I said I'm not. That's not really fair. I don't really hate it. Um, but he said, just for the sake of argument, would you, you know, would you do the, would you be the dick about it? Basically, I said, all right. Um, but I think the, the one salient point I came up with, you know, after making dumb Yoda jokes was that real bit, real fans like the guys who do 90 minute exegesis on um, any one of these movies are just they don't hold up to such scrutiny. I mean, you can't you can't parse them Talmudically and and have it all scan in a satisfying way. So, like, you mentioned Siskel and Ebert. Like, their reviews were five minutes. And and it's not to say that, you know, if, if it floats your boat and you want to analyze it and, and, you know, look at every frame like it's the Zapruder film, fine. But but it's not going to it's not gonna give you the, the, probably the satisfaction ultimately if these movies fall short. You know, you just can't, you know, you can't shake your fist at the heavens and go, why was this Star Wars mediocre? It's like, because it's it's a business and there's all sorts of factors that go into it. It's, you know, it's not always going to work. But I, I think I don't know. Felix, I think that's perhaps my age talking. I think Felix and I just for the show were talking about Chapo as well and how Chapo has grown. Because you can look at all criticism online now, not just films, has turned into this weird world where like... It used to... Be, I feel like it It used to be a time, like you were saying, Felix, where it used to be the, the fun of the internet was watching someone just real get down and dirty and just hate something. But there's less fun about that, and Chapo has grown not so much by hating, but there's almost this, like... Or if not changing targets, then at least being fair, f- hating at the same level on everything. Yeah, um... The... Like, the comedy of the old internet, I think it was sort of a function of... It, you know, it was sort of a coming of age thing. Uh, nothing against the guy himself, but I think Maddox was a pretty, uh. pretty big exemplar of the old internet. You know, you would read it when you were of a certain age, you know, a certain age range of you know, like from thirteen to maybe twenty, twenty-two, and you'd be like, "Oh, this is fucking hilarious!" Like. Uh, it, this is, you know, he really fucking skewered the people that like Nokia phones or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah. He, and uh, <laughs> he too doesn't, he too doesn't like people in line who talk. Yeah. But you, I guess you, you <laughs> become like a more complete human being in the world. Uh, you see more things and you're like, I really can't work up the rage to, to do- <laughs> You know, call call like the guy in the Fandango ad a cunt or whatever, or hope he dies. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Like all the time, yeah, all the time, just getting that mad at innocuous <laughs> things all the time. Yeah, it's exhausting and yeah, false after a while. If you're not moving on, yeah. there's something fucked up. One correction I'll make to that though is both Felix and I get consistently mad at random things, but I think that the is difference. True. The difference is. That it's not like 
performative, and apparently this word doesn't exist, but fuck you, I'm using it. It's it, it's it's like we you have an opinion and it is applied to a thing, but it's like if there's just a guy in a line, he's talking like, eh, what a prick. But there are certain maybe there is just a market out there, or there isn't a market out there for people who are just fucking just grossly angry at everything and they just want to expel their rage and it isn't that funny it isn't that enjoyable to watch it is it's boring as shit like it is a i can think of a few things that are more boring than uh you know being just going through your life going through this actually very easy experience where you you know with a little bit of work and input you can find some sort of fulfillment and, you know, going like, uh, uh, women who wear leggings are fucking cunts. They're shit waffles. They're thinking <laughs> where you start conjugating swears, like where oh, everyone is yeah. thunder cunt, ass fuck, shit monger. And I feel like that sort of went away because there's only a few logical conclusions to that. One is that you, uh, of course, you become woke and you see a lot of this writing style from that type of the internet you see it on Wonkette. He's <laughs> one of the worst, oh one my of the God. worst yeah. fucking blogs there is uh, where they're like They they haven't sh- they have not changed their house style since uh, the Gulf War too. I mean <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's still <laughs> I felt like that sequel lacked a lot of plot, personally. Just uh oh, that wasn't funny. Keep going guys. Uh Ed, no, as a uh, <laughs> oh, as oh, a yeah. comedy I'll, expert I'll hang up. <laughs> as a comedy expert, here's how you should have done that joke. Um, uh, I, I, um, I wish, uh, I wish Gulf War II had blackface on. So I would have done that joke. That's <laughs> why so we pull down five I, figures a month. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, okay, can, the, how, how'd we get here? Oh, one cat, right. Right, Wonkette. Wonkette is like, yeah, that's what happens when those, like, guys who are, like, you know, epic rants about single mothers become woke and, like, vote for Obama. They still retain that same verbal sensibility of being, like, you know, this epic cunt spawn fuck waffle. But they're using it about, like, Mitch McConnell or yeah, like any, a, anyone yeah. who isn't a centrist Democrat. Like, like, right, right. I saw one of them today from some... You know, I mean, they're they're pretty much daily occurrences on the Twitter, but somebody did the uh, yeah the the sort of German style <laughs> noun making, uh. <laughs> just like shoving things together, um, and and it was about you know people who don't support Cory Booker basically. That that shit is amazing. <sighs> it's fucking amazing when like you try to take the rage that can only really exist in like an adolescent boy or girl who's living in this sort of muted suburban hell and try to apply it to like investment bank backed politicians. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think the other direction it goes, goes in is you, you become a Nazi. You know? <laughs> the right, only right. way to go. Well, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. The natural outgrowth is you vote for Trump yeah. and you, <laughs> you drink liberal tears all well, day. And, and all the fucking weird- day. The weird thing is... Got the mug, got the, the mug. The weird thing is Maddox apparently is not posted since what looks like the 7th of November 2016, which is odd timing and all. But a friend of mine, and friend's a stretch, he's a Snapchat expert or something, so enemy, I guess, is more appropriate. But he <laughs> said, one time I randomly tweeted about Maddox being shit. The guy who wrote such brilliant things as Penn and Teller, my take on that bullshit... Special orders are for special assholes and a case for the Grinch. He was like, Maddox is a really nice guy, which actually makes it worse because if he is a nice guy, this is like fucking like like over a decade of squeezing hatred out of his asshole. And that must be like, Jesus, he must be the most depressed man alive. And I really would love it if Maddox somehow heard this and then wrote some like in- immensely forced mad thing. Ed the cunt Zitron. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, Ed pissing I mean, Zitron. I, I, I have nothing against him. I mean, <laughs> I have nothing just... against anyone making their money, to, like finding their niche on the internet. Yeah. But uh, it is like, it seems fucking exhausting to be that. Yeah. I mean, I've spent like, 
most Absolutely. of my life angry and it is exhausting and it's it's a weird thing with criticism in it, I like the idea of moving in that that direction because it comes back to like games and pr- films and TV and it just got to this weird point where like there's a point when I saw like three episodes of the Big Bang Theory and I got mad I was like mad at it and then I look then like people were like that's then that's the that's the proper reaction. But then I start. I think I tweeted about it or I talked to a few friends and they were madder and that it became like an hour and a half to two hour long yeah. conversation. I was like, <laughs> oh guys, I don't have this much energy to hate this. Like this is like it's not just energy; it's time. It's like a chunk of your life you have kind of seeded to the Big Bang Theory, which feels dirty. <laughs> I, but it's just. I mean, I will gladly get angry about something I've spent money on and be like, this is shitty. Like, my fucking why, my router was, it fucked up most of my day. But at the same time, I don't think I have it in me. And I used, when I used to review games, I remember getting in trouble for being a hater. That was like a consistent theme, apparently. And they were like, you just want to go and hate stuff. I'm like, oh my god. You don't want me to go and hate shit because that would be also really fucking boring. I just didn't like this thing and I didn't like this thing as well. It just happens I didn't like two things or like 11 things or like 25 things in a row. And it, like, But there's this conflation I feel with criticism that to be a critic you have to hate something. And I feel like it's taken over mm. most of internet criticism. It's either... it's. Com- it's I did. Uh, I did theater criticism very briefly here for like the local uh, alt weekly, and I I hated it. I really because it, it did seem like you needed a it needed a brand that I don't know was colorful and and kind of divorced from the actual experience of seeing the thing. First of all, I didn't, you know, I'm not, I don't have any real theory of like theater and movies to apply to it. And, you know, absent that, you just try to try some, some prosaic fireworks there. And I, you know, I, I got out of it quickly. Also didn't help that a lot of my friends were the ones I was reviewing and I was too much of a chicken shit to (laughs) criticize them. (laughs) Also, if you turn in, I imagine turning in reviews of most things. Like you always, I suppose you have to have a certain talent with all criticism. And Felix, you in the things you've like when you reviewed even like Suicide Squad, great example. You you did not like that movie, but you found some joy in it despite it being quite bad. And I think that that's what's missing. There's the like it's like people feel like you either need to furiously write an ejaculation. Or you either you need to burn the shit to the ground. There can be no middle ground. There can be no fix. There can there can only be complete desolation or just love. Well, yeah, that is isn't that like a a function of like kind of why people fucking hate nerds so much? <laughs> is, yeah, uh, it's because it's because yep. they they can't just love or hate something. Like if they if they love something, it's like. I mean, now we know he's a piece of shit for much worse other reasons. Oh, but, great. I want to talk about Bill before Cosby. Before we knew that, <laughs> well, close, actually. Before we knew that, we knew he was a piece of shit writer, yeah. uh, Devin Faraci. <laughs> is like, <laughs> read a review of Devin Faraci is where he likes something. And it's like it's like a fucking it's like a guy from ISIS talking about uh, Islam. <laughs> it's like you can't just you can't just enjoy this for you. It really is Captain America redefining everything. And if you don't see it, you're a piece of shit. It's, yeah. it, only a genius can appreciate it. Uh, and then on the other hand, where you you hate something and you you know I saw Suicide Squad and it was. Fucking bad, but I didn't want anything bad to happen to like. Yeah, I didn't even. I don't even want for them to like for their careers to stall. I want them to keep making movies. I actually I, had a good time watching the film. It was. I had a except, great time. Except Zack. Yeah. Except Zack Snyder. He needs to be uh, thrown well, out. Zack window. Snyder does. I don't need. I hope Zack Snyder just like gets the family counseling he needs. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My daughter, my daughter. But it, it sort of like goes into what you want. People either consciously or subconsciously have this where 
you are so when you're writing something like that, you are setting a tone and an experience that you want your regular readers to have. And do you want them to feel like they're in a cult where they're the only people who know to hate this thing in the way that you do, or they're the only people that know to experience joy in the way you do? Because you cannot relate to anyone processing something differently than you. Or do you just like want them to, uh, whether they agree with you or not, or saw the things you saw or not, like to enjoy themselves while they read it. And mm-hmm. I think that it is- on the internet, people kind of, because of this cultural heritage, people uh, forget that the primary duty of the writer should be that, you know, you should want to read them. You should enjoy reading them. Yeah. Hell yes. And and I think the yeah, I mean, I think because it comes from a lot of the stuff you see on the Internet about movies, especially the big blockbuster movies, um, has gotten into an unholy kind of blob with nerd culture. Um, the 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 onus to do what you said, Felix, either like condemn it to hell, die in a fire or basically jacket in front of the camera <laughs> is, is I, I mean, the, and, and it's, I don't know. It's just not that fun to watch after a while. I mean, the, 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 the nerd culture of, of, uh, send it to hell or embrace it with your whole soul is, is very, yeah. Like you said, it, it has a culty ISIS thing after a while. And I think, you know, not everybody who likes nerdy stuff, obviously, uh, embraces that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of self-awareness about it, but I also think it's just not that fun to watch somebody do that, to perform that, whether they believe it or not. Um, it's, it's sort of the, the burden of it as a writer or a YouTube rant doer is, is to be interesting and to be, to be fun. And I don't know some combination thereof. And thinking back to when I was reviewing games, the times I got in trouble (laughs) was never quite, like, it wasn't the times I gave a game, like, 21% and said it was, like, someone (laughs) farted in my face. It was always, like, (laughs) it would be a popular AAA game that someone else was probably going to review and, like, I don't know, they got scabies or something and couldn't come into work and my dipshit ass got it. And I'd give it, like, 74%. And they'd come in, I, I'd get marched before the publisher, or I'd get, like, my, my editor, who's a fantastic guy, but he'd be like, what was wrong with it then? I said, I wrote 3,000 fucking words saying, I can tell you. And he's like, why didn't you like it? I did like it. You gave it 74%. But no, 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 I, that means I just didn't like it the most. Hey, the time that I felt most in danger for myself and my family was when we uh, riffed the Dark Knight. Oh, oh God! Which, which, which is consistently on lists of like the greatest movies ever, especially like the year that it happened. And you know, we were pretty irreverent to it. We didn't, we didn't poop all over it, but um, that that was crossing a line for some reason with a lot of guys. And it's weird as well. It's this. I, it's like, why don't you just dig up Keith and just like shit on him? <laughs> it, People felt a lot of emotional connection to the the Joker. Maybe still still do. Yeah, they did. I just called him Keith too, which I probably did. <laughs> but yeah, that 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 got all mixed up in their in their adult brains, like you know. He's dead and you killed him. <laughs> yeah. That, by the way, that was a real fucking yeah. nasty thing to do, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was an error. I, I'll, I, I wrote a Tumblr post apologizing. So <laughs> something happened with, with some pills. So guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's. I think it's time to bring it all out in the open. Okay. Some things happened with a hotel and some pills. Um, but it's, it, but it's this interesting polarizing Just, thing where like, and it applies to a lot of things. It applies to politics. I mean, you can, it's tr- it's trite, but fuck it, you can bring it up. It's like there's like the Hillary supporters who get mad when you either love hit, you must either love Hillary with your like sister Hillary must be must be obeyed and loved. You cannot criticize her and still be a Democrat or whatever thing. Thing, but it goes across so many things on the internet. It's Let's, this. Po- I like calling her mother. Mother mustn't disrespect mother. mother. That's the best one. <laughs> but it's maybe it all comes down to this weird eh, anthropomorph- 
Oh, I can't even say the fucking word, but it, it, this weird, like, making it about yourself that people do, this weird, like, projection upon it. I know so many people, like, after The Matrix came out, suddenly, like, wanted to, like, fucking... And they all wanted to wear trench coats and glasses and beat and learn kung fu. And I and so... And this is not me boasting, by the way. Nobody cares, but... So I saw John Wick 2 the other day. I was at the premiere. By the way, Hollywood premieres are really funny. And just like, um, I was there with uh, Peter Stormare. And so everyone's in suits. Everyone's like in tuxedos and suits and like nice dresses. And the dude walks in in a tracksuit and a king's hat. You have to respect that. That, that dude fucking <laughs> rules. <laughs> just, oh, he's in that? That's oh, awesome. He is, I, I, don't, I actually really don't want to spoil the movie. Not because I could read you the, read you the entire plot and it would still be wonderful because it's so just. Oh, of course. And yeah. Even then I'd say yeah, it's a strong like eight out of ten. First John Wick was a 9 out of 10 for me. It wasn't as good as the first one. And I guarantee there's going to be someone mad because whenever a movie really has this, it either has someone you can project onto. So one of the, one of the smartest Mr. Plinkett things was he said that Indiana Jones is not a good character. It's in fact someone that you project onto. And it's the same James Bond mm-hmm. thing of like, men want to be him, women want to be with him thing. But with John Wick, it's like, you want to be that kind of soulless badass who gets a vengeance, going back to, like, the Count of Monte Cristo. And, but that... But still loves, still, still loves puppies. Still loves puppies, but he loves his cars. But the thing, that movie, by the way, I have a prediction right now, is going to cause so much fucking conversation about guns, and it's going to cause so much, so many things about fucking, like, there's going to be so many gun boners over that movie, it's going to be ridiculous. So... It's going to have the same thing with The Matrix with trench coats. The Matrix, uh, I can sort of draw a line between that and the Silicon Valley weirdos who are, isn't there, isn't there like a working theory for some rich idiots out there <laughs> that we are living in a simulation? Oh my God, yes. Yeah, oh, rich the worst people theory love that ever. shit. I mean, it's just like... It's be- you know it's entirely based. It couldn't be that it couldn't be that you're just like a dumpy bald guy. You must be like <laughs> you realize that- an avatar of like this this Greek god somewhere. You realize something though. That theory has the best, most like pathetic origin, and that is it was said at the Code Conference 2016, which cost sixty. It was not sixty six thousand dollars a seat just to get in. I think you had to apply to, and it is like one thing that Elon Musk said. It's Elon Musk was like, yeah, we could be living in a simulation. And everyone's like, oh my God, really? Father Elon said it. Put their hand it. down their pants right away. <laughs> it's just, je- it's just <laughs> like, you're right. It is that feeling of, and there is, and I love, and I. That guy has become such a, such a freak. I love it as well. Did you see him the other day? He's like, he's, he decided he's going to like negotiate on behalf of the entire American public with Trump for the immigration thing. Oh, that's beautiful. He, Great. It was. It was Great. very. Like, just like we're saved. Give me some. Uh, give me some ideas for some amendments to it, and I'll bring them to the president. And like, who appointed you, space boy? <laughs> and as a Tesla driving fuckware, I can think of no one less qualified to have that conversation. That dude in that that dude I, invented yeah. PayPal. He has no way of understanding nuance or how things work. Like seriously, dude, come on, you fucking no, did PayPal. He's, he's well, I think it was him. It was him and Peter. He's an android. He's an android. But it's it is really interesting as well because even with Teslas, it's like Elon Musk is is just even he's with him. People can't criticize him because Christ, if you say one bad thing about Elon Musk, people fucking burn your house down these days it's in he's like in league with trump just straight up like holding hands and like dancing after steve jobs cacked they needed a new uh, <laughs> a new avatar uh steve jobs isn't dead hey before we go i wanted to ask you guys i wanted to ask you guys about one specific youtuber that we got enthralled with at riff tracks Please. he was a he was a kid his name was uh, Pruane too, but he called himself Sex Man. <laughs> Wait, what? Is this familiar to you? I'm at not all? familiar with Sex Man other he's, than he's, myself. He's, he's, oh my god, he was hilarious. He was this really nerdy, zitty kid with braces. Why did I just put Sex Man into YouTube? <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> yeah, be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> 
And he would go, you know, I saw the, I saw the, the Matrix again. And, you know, it was all right, but it kind of sucked. <laughs> and uh, he, he spoke really filthy, and he, talk, and he mostly talked about his haters. <laughs> and then once he was, he, he did a big diss of, of uh, 50 Cent. And, um, you know, we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, 50 Cent and you were feuding. That's really adorable, kid. And then a couple of weeks later, he was filming something from New York and he's like, he's in the picture and then he pans it over and sitting next to him is 50 Cent and they're just like <laughs> hanging out. Oh my God. Talking over their beef together. That's like, like, that's like the man, end of the usual suspects. That's like fucking. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> and it turns out it's all a viral thing that 50 Cent's a, been planning. It was perfect. <laughs> I'll send you guys a link if I can find it, but I think he scrubbed his stuff and you know joined a joined a camp or something like that. Hey, that guy sounds like Demonius X. Well, like, that's just like, that's the cool thing. Oh yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. Demonius X is one of the greatest ever, by the way. And I'm sad that the internet is the way it is because we'll never have another guy like him. <laughs> oh, well, at least not as good as yeah, him. He was amazing. Like, I'd love it, you, like Demonius. If you were now, if you're a Demonius X guy, you just become a boring anime Nazi. But that dude was a fucking auteur. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> he was so good. Yeah, he was both repulsive and, and sort of evoked a sort of empathy, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. A sad sack. I wish they'd, like, do, like... Like, like if Gene Siskel was still alive... Like I wish he would have been, like, or he, if if either Siskel or Ebert would have existed, they could have do, done a film show with Demonius X. <laughs> <laughs> just it's, it's like it's well, Demonius like, just sweating between them. Yeah, yeah completely air conditioned. Like you know, I'm de- done with girls, you guys. <laughs> yeah, they're they're trying to watch like Salo or like another Criterion <laughs> film. <laughs> Why are they shooting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I've, I've taken us down a dark path. Oh boy. But no, it's it's really weird how it. I feel I feel like maybe maybe it's just the same thing that creates every hateful, shitty part of the internet. But there is like th- this polarization is really insane, and I feel like it's really what like, to wrap up the show. It's what makes the internet, and it's what made it's it's making the internet a bit genuinely unpleasant at the moment. Because it's like, I feel like people can't really choose but to be negative at the moment with the news and all. And it's the first time I've ever felt like not going on Twitter, like I'm addicted to it. But it's, it, it's weird. It's like, Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's easy to see that, I mean, it's easy to fall into, and I've done it plenty of times myself, where I, I make some dumb joke, it's a little bit pointed, and some, you know, canker replies to me and I get my dander up and pretty soon I'm calling him a cunt. I'm like, what happened, man? What how did I get to this state? That happens to me it's, it's it's Oh yeah, that happens to me like all the time where it's just like a guy with like hundred and eighty seven followers and I'm like, you're a fucking piece of shit and I pull back and I'm like, <laughs> how did I end up here? In this existential struggle with this random guy, <laughs> it's like he's like uh, like GOP Dan fifty, yeah. and he's and he's just said he disagrees on some minor point. Like yeah. it's not, not nothing really to do with you or anything that important. Within set, yeah, within seconds, uh, I go from like a guy mild asking me like a mildly condescending question. To me being like, listen, co- you know, <laughs> coffee progressive 1975, <laughs> you don't give a shit about the people in Yemen, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I remember one time, this always happens when I like can't go to the gym. When I can't go to the gym, I, this is like how my retarded brain energy gets out, is me getting <laughs> those arguments. And I was injured. I, I had like a, some problem with like my back and I couldn't go to the gym for like two weeks during the primary once. And I like kind of I found myself waiting in line at the bodega and sending pictures of the aftermath of drone strikes to a Hillary guy who is DMing with me. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was like, this is why am I doing this? 
<laughs> just getting so a, mad, getting so mad while people are around me are little, like, uh, it's it, it's this. Yeah, have a coffee, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the same thing. Happened, the same thing happened to me when I saw That's Rogue some... One, and I was like, I like it. And and this is, I'm glad I never said how I feel about it now, which is I like it less now I've thought about it. But I was like, Rogue One was really good, and some guy was like, No, it fucking isn't. <laughs> like, oh, okay, um, and 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 luck with within within two tweets, he's like doing your mom from behind. Yeah, and, I, and I and I actually like seriously had a tweet written out, and this is how like, like truly the 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 psychology problems I have, the problems in my psychology or just psychology in general, where like I wrote, I like go fuck yourself, you shithead, and I, I was like at work. I was like, I think I just, yeah, I was just at work. I like had shit to do, but I like had like several tweets written. I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking take this piece of shit to town over just like, nope. A thing I make fun of people for just, just, just like completely belligerent. Oh, yeah. It's like the internet injects hate in you. Like it's like, it's like Godfather two. when uh, when uh, Michael tells Senator, we're all part of the same hypocrisy, Senator. Oh. It's like, I, I, I make fun of people who are getting nude, mad, and red. And uh, yesterday I found myself trying to deploy the language of the anime Nazis against them. I Like, for a brief second in my brain, I thought that was really clever. You know, it's like, oh, are you triggered? Oh, my <laughs> God. Is, I, is, wow. Just, you know, I've been low there. Hanging, I'm sorry, man. Low-hanging fruit dumbness. You have yeah. no idea how many times I've been there in one form or the other. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's like uh, I've I've got I've got you now, uh, uh, Heinrich Memler. <laughs> <laughs> this is more like just yelling at like some fifteen year old virgin. Uh, he's, not even, he's not even a Nazi. He just like is angry. He's, like, yeah, he's, he's fifteen. He like had a bad day. Yeah, he just hasn't. He hasn't been laid yet. Really, I think that's the funniest thing. By the way, are uh, when uh, like libs argue with those people and they. Uh, They'll be like you're a twelve year old virgin. That's funny. Just to make fun of a child for being a virgin. <laughs> this is the coolest. This is the funniest thing. When we were in DC, uh, Matt kept getting mad, like seeing maggot. Like we all did. We all got mad seeing like the suburban, like upper middle class maggot chuds. And there are these kids holding a flat, like a Trump flag, in front of this Smithsonian we we're going into. And me and Matt were muttering to each other. <laughs> We were like those fucking virgins, like, f- like, like fucking mu- like fucking Motley. By <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the time I was thirteen, I had twenty five biker chicks I was on a- my belt. <laughs> I was born getting a Hummer. <laughs> it's, it's 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 great though when it goes oh the God. other way though, and someone just gets fucking mad at you out of nowhere, like getting hit by a car suddenly. Like, not literally, but it's like with person. So, I wrote this big person of interest piece, like one of my one of my madness turns. And I was just like, I'm going to write 8,000 words on the show, like 12 people wrote, like actually watched. And, but occasionally, like, I get a few people who are like, oh, thanks for writing this. It's cool. And then occasionally I'll get someone like, I fucking watched the whole show and it sucks shit. You motherfucker. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Go ask Jonathan Nolan for your money back. You watched it on Netflix, you little turd. And I, I never know what to say because on some level I'm scared. I'm like, I don't really know what to do. You're so angry. Please. Well, I, um, I actually like it when that happens because... I just I know how powerless they are in the face of being <laughs> mad as shit because I'm there so frequently. And I'm yeah. like, all right, tables are turned. I can do whatever I want to you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm like, like, there are a lot of Trump people yelling at us recently, and uh, you bet oh, I steal wonder valor why. while I'm doing that. <laughs> Constantly stealing valor when oh, the Trump people yell. Uh, and that's and that's that's the beautiful thing about it as well. It's just. This ang, this like crazy anger as well. There is something. I, I guess the es- it's like the rubber band effect of the escapism. Like they get so invested in it, they get super mad. Uh, Bill, to your point about like the Dark Knight, like people watch it and that who do they think they are in that movie? Are they the Joker? Do you want to be the guy who just blows up a fucking hospital? He was cool. 
<laughs> it's like, and you're like, well, he, you know, baby. I, Wait a minute, you want to be Two Face? <laughs> Come on. Well, yeah, like a, like a pretty <laughs> mediocre politician. <laughs> I mean, ship, we have Congress condition. already. I would be. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Leto. I would be the police captain who drinks acid. <laughs> like he, that's my favorite part of the movie is that uh, they kill the police captain by like replacing his bourbon with like <laughs> acid that instantly kills him. Like he wouldn't notice like the moment it touches his lips. I know. And I'm I'm the guy who dies because he has a cell phone bomb inside him because policemen don't ever do metal detection. Did you know that? Yeah. How the fuck did Joker get anyone to work for his gang? Yeah. He's and like, was- yeah, there's an there's an 85 percent chance I'm going to kill you to make a point. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And I set I set fire to mountains of money that you would like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just just roll roll with me on this, you guys. I'm what like, a what shitty a- boss. What a shitty movie! Like, <laughs> but not to turn this into the podcast I've dreamed of. Be careful, it, Ed. Yeah, careful. To, no, I'm right. I, I, all of my p- opinions are correct. Everyone else is wrong. No, but there's one bit. The one bit in that movie that I always get in arguments with people, like for some reason, it really upsets people. And I heard, I'll tell you the worst defense of the movie ever. <laughs> On top of it is. He's like shooting a Batman. Batman's in the fucking Batmobile and they're driving along another plodding, meaningless fucking chase that goes nowhere. And he's like shooting him with a K-47. It's like, ah, no, a gun, but I am bulletproof. And he shoots him with something else. Ah, I can still protect. And he puts out a fucking bazooka. Where's this fucking guy getting all his money? And seriously, I said yeah, that to someone and they got in my fucking face. They were like, don't fucking talk about that movie, man. Like I was like well, that movie. Like, what the fuck? Like, and they. By the way, their critic, their way of explaining the Joker was like, you have to think of him more as like a mythical creature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like <laughs> mythical creatures usually exist to make a point, like some sort of uh, moral yeah. point, right? And uh, right. the Joker's point is that uh, sometimes the coolest things are scary. Right. <laughs> His point is like that Orson Welles commercial for champagne where he's falling asleep because he's been drinking since six in the morning and he just goes, just do anything. Because that is the entire joke. He just does whatever. It's not chaos. He's just fucking around. He doesn't care. And so, you know, so some, some people just want to watch the world burn, you guys. I think it was pretty well said. We're so culturally but, fascinated. Uh, We're so culturally fascinated with like the Joker and shit like that, that... Like, whenever Trump does something that, you know, you would do if you were an impulsive shithead, as he yeah. is, like, <laughs> like, like when he's like, he's like on the phone with the president of Mexico and he's like, uh, what if, what if I sent a Marine to kill your wife or <laughs> like whatever he does? Right, right. Or, or just like, like randomly yells like, are you eating a taco? That's what your people eat. Like something yeah. like that. Like people are like, don't fall for it. It's part of his plan because yeah. they love the Joker and they think that Trump know, is like they the think, Joker. They think he's got like a, <clears throat> they think he's got a big like master wall with all these uh, <laughs> with all these, like a flow chart of how he's gonna do, and like little little rivulets of arrows of how he's gonna distract Twitter while he bombs Mexico. It's like, it's like no, he's just a he's he's a borderline dementia goon, yeah, and he's dangerous because he's like a wounded animal, but he's like a big dumb blustering idiot, and well, not you know, like everyone is everyone is making him into Moriarty, and they're doing well, you know, and if they're not doing that, they're doing that with Bannon now. Who's you know gonna die hopefully in six months? Yeah. Although I, we've been waiting for that for Cheney for a long time, and it never happened. But Cheney, so. Cheney, Cheney wasn't a drunk like Bannon. I mean, yeah, that's the funniest is what people do with Bannon. Like Bannon isn't just like a racist drunk rich guy. Like he's yeah. a genius. Yeah. He ran Breitbart, which is yeah. the three hundredth biggest racist <laughs> website. It on the internet. It's like, <laughs> right. it has an Alexa ranking of 259,000. And it's, but this is, yeah. and I think that that's where a lot of this whole, like, I don't know, Hillary is Queen B or like Hillary is like Daenerys Targaryen. Or Khaleesi. What, yeah, or whatever fucking thing it is, because in the same mode that 
the re- I, I'd say it all comes back to the same point of why you get this polarized criticism everywhere and more so on the internet is because yeah, everyone's going to fall in one bucket, but it's also, it's like, it's so much easier to think of everything psych- like psychologically. And I know this because I got a media and communications degree from a West coast town in Wales. I, I can safely say that I think people are just watching these things and they're like, it's so much easier to imagine that Hillary was some grand like queen who was who lost her her chance because of unfairness or the injustice, and that Trump is a bad person who stole the thing, versus the real world, which is so much less just and so much more boring. It's so much more fucking atrociously sheer. It's like he's just an asshole. He- the only way that, like, the only way that Hillary can still be, like, slay Queen Khaleesi is if Trump is, like, a mastermind. Because if you look at the truth, which is Trump is just, like, a complete impulsive shithead moron, fattest, oldest, dumbest president, then you're like, wait, actually, Hillary kind of sucks because she lost to him in a really stupid way. So you have to, you have to make him the Joker. Left hundreds of thousands of votes on the table, just yeah. basically. And and my favorite one today was, of <sighs> course, a uh, future congresswoman uh, or House or whatever thing she's not going to win. Um, Brianna Wu saying that the real reason Hillary lost was, in fact, Gamergate. Totally agree. It, it, totally agree. Oh my god! One hundred percent correct. And and there was a point when I there was a point <laughs> where I almost like like Brianna Wu, but like after that I'm just kind of like Jesus Christ, no, sorry. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna work for her campaign. Yeah, yeah, I'm me gonna, too, actually. She nailed I'm gonna it. run against her and win entirely just by saying you don't game. Just be like, you don't game. <laughs> <laughs> Have you beaten every Final Fantasy? Um, and then if she says yes, I'll say no, I you thought, didn't. I don't. I didn't imagine this. I just got on my phone here. D Ray, our pal D Ray. Oh yeah, I quite like in his own way. My man. He got on the other day. He actually did the uh, the Khaleesi thing with Sally Yates. <laughs> you know, who just got fired as AG the other day. And this is verbatim: Sally Quillian Yates of the House Resistance, first of her name, the unburnt queen of no bullshit and the Constitution. Breaker of chains. Why? Why even make that? Like, why make that tweet? Why not just like? Why not say why, she was sometimes good? Sometimes I see people like make tweets, and it's like, uh, why not just like shut the fuck up? Like, why not try that? Sally Yates is great, but uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and and also. <laughs> Yeah. And also, please admit that you didn't know who Sally Yates was yesterday, because I no sure did. I didn't. I had no I idea. Sure as hell I, didn't. Nobody did. I, I definitely didn't I know who that was. Podcast about politics. Not. I didn't know. No, but like, <laughs> no, but seriously though, there's so many cases where it's like, and actually, one of the best, the uh, one of the best things I've ever seen involving <clears throat> popular entertainment and anything to do with the campaign was someone posted like a Star Trek clip. It's like several Star Trek photos. Of like an alien oh, talking yeah, to yeah, Picard. Yeah. It's like Queen B, Slay Queen, Hil- Hillary number one, Trump Voldemort. And it's perfect because it is just that. And it's then there's a Picard reaction shot, which kind of lost it for me. But it's it's that perfect level of just, you could just, I don't mind if someone, I did see a few people being like, she's a fucking American hero. It's like, eh. Is she I mean, not really? <laughs> it's like, it's just, but I actually find that it's a pretty low bar. Yeah, I find that less offensive than like the people who are like she's like fucking Superwoman and Wonder Woman had a baby because we don't need men and she saved America. It's like no, she just was a dissenting. AG for about three minutes and then fucking just everyone t- like everyone was like mad that she- it could have been anyone. If it were, like, and it was just like, yeah, I there's, mean, there's this dramatism added. To, I think it is, it all comes down to one thing where it's like, there's a, if you don't add this drama to the real world, you have to realize just the real world's pretty boring and unjust. But, but I have to say, I think there's something to the fact that somebody like Sally Yates the other day, by doing something simple but principled, can stand out in bold relief against all the jellyfish out there, you know, like in the Senate. 
I mean, our, our ostensible champions on the dem, in the Democratic Party, I mean, I use that very sarcastically, but are all tweeting about how upset they are. And, you know, when, it, when the rubber hits the road, they're just sort of useless. Yeah. And somebody like Sally Yates actually doing something and planting her feet, you know, it might be a one-time thing. It, I don't know if we'll ever hear from her again, but it just, it just goes to show you how hungry people are for for anyone to do to just do something decent um, and a little bit courageous. I mean, that's why Bernie caught on. <clears throat> he's got the personality of a flounder. And, you know, he's just he's a haranguing old guy from, from New he York. Right. And I love him for that. But I was surprised at how much of the country he played in just because it's like, God, you know, he you can count on him. He's he's not scared of anybody and he means what he says. And it was the same with Wellstone here in Minnesota. Yeah, no, totally. People who were way, way to the right of Paul Wellstone loved him because he's he just, you know, he he didn't have that haze of weird, uh, you know, 12 consultants deep speak that so many Democrats and Republicans do, you know. And it's all, anyway, it's all we, we went way far away from YouTubers. Yeah, we did. We did. Wow. Well, well, and I have to admit, I'm really insulted. And that's why we're going to probably have to close the podcast off here. Because one thing we do with the scumbag that I'm proud of is we have a rigid structure and we stick to it. And you <laughs> fucked it up, Bill. I personally am one of the most structured uh, artists. I'm going to call myself an artist. Uh, artist that an there is turn. online. I'm an auteur. I I wander, uh, you know, thematically. I wander like watching an ant go from the hill to the crumbs. <laughs> just you know, <laughs> just, you know, I actually consider um, it's a pleasure. I, I was just going to say, I, go I consider myself a combination of an auteur and an artist. If you get what I'm, uh, <laughs> see what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, before uh, and before we all get another episode in the bag where we alienate a group of people, I'm just gonna end it there, everyone. Bill, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's such a pleasure having you. My pleasure, guys. You're it's really fun talking to you. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Bill. That was great. Absolutely. My pleasure. We apologize to all of our artistic listeners. I've been Ed Zitron. I've been Felix Biederman. And this has been the scum... Oh, yeah, you can say it if you fucking want to. Jesus Christ. Fucking thought he was a, pro- <laughs> thought he was a fucking professional. Jesus. Whatever, man. Just say it. I am Red Letter Media. <laughs> and, I, and I am Serbia. Thank you for listening to The Scumbag. We'll see you next week. Probably not.